The next theorem that we are going to prove is that every field is an integral domain. So this is one of the smallest proofs. So let me write the proof. So let F be a field. And uh, I will take A to be a non-zero element and let A be a non-zero element in the field. And uh, assume a into b is equal to 0. Assume that a into b is equal to 0. Now look at look at the statement carefully. It is given to us that f is field and I have to prove that f is what? f is an integral domain. That is why I have assumed here that a b is equal to 0. So at the end I must be equal I must be able to prove that either a is 0 or b is equal to 0. But I know that a is not equal to 0. So I will not prove a equal to 0. So it means if I want to show that f is an integral domain, it means indirectly that I have to prove b equal to 0. Correct. So let me write it down. So to prove b equal to 0. When I prove that b equal to 0, it will automatically mean that the field f is an integral domain. Correct. Because a is not equal to 0. So since a is not equal to 0 and a is in field, we know that in field you can find inverse of this multiplicative inverse of a, right? Hence, 1 upon a exists, which is inverse of the element a in the field in F. That is A into A inverse or A into 1 upon A will be how much? Will be equal to 1. Means 1 upon A is the multiplicative inverse of this A. Right. Now I will start with something which is assumed. What is assumed? Since by assumption a into b is equal to 0. This implies 1 upon a into a into b is equal to 1 upon a into 0. But a into 1 upon a is how much? But a into 1 upon a is 1 by this step into b and 1 upon a into 0 is 0 and therefore I have proved that b is equal to 0. Hence, what is the conclusion of our exercise? The conclusion is that of this theorem. If a b is 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. Why? Because we have assumed that a b a is not equal to 0, which is equivalent to say that if a b is 0 and a is not equal to 0, then we have proved that b is equal to 0, which means that the field f is an integral domain. This is the definition of our integral domain. So this completes this proof.